You're listening to Brainwork Framework, a business and marketing podcast brought to you by focus-biz.com. Business owners and entrepreneurs and new managers. We have with us a very special guest who is going to help us with our more effective hiring, employee development, and retention. He is the CEO and founder of Peopleytics, and he's going to share with us a wealth of experience, specifically what new managers need as far as tools in order for them to succeed. Brian, thanks so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me, Chris. I'm glad to be here. Hey, thank you. We appreciate it. So Peopleytics, this is a, a company that you founded. You saw a need in the market. How did that discovery first come about where you knew this had to be something that needed to be solved? Yeah, it, it's a, kind of a labor of love, I guess, if you will. Call it a second chapter, however you want to describe it. I had a pretty good, strong exciting career in the car business, retail automotive, about 35 years where I started as a salesperson, worked my way all the way up uh, the ladder and was a uh, general manager and partner in dealerships and absolutely loved the business. But one of the challenges, of course, is how do you find the right people? How do you develop those people? How do you retain those people? And, and, and so I'm like most business owners and, and managers, I made every mistake you can make, right? I, I, I really did. I screwed up everything. And, and, and unfortunately, that usually resulted in a loss of good people, good talent. I, I really wanted to find a better way. And I was able to do that. And there's lots of tools out there in the world and lots of interesting information. But I found a company called Predictive Index and I was introduced to it. And it really provided me all the stuff I was looking for. How do I understand people? How do I develop people? What did they need from me in order to really achieve success? And so when I left, I used it. I was a client for almost two decades. And then when I left the business, I decided this is what I want to do. I need to help other companies leverage this information and this tool. That's so Here. important. I feel like today's management team are not hired because of their past management experience. Maybe the company is looking for something new and fresh, but unfortunately that means they have a lack of understanding and education on what it takes to hire and manage and motivate people. Why do you think there's such a disconnect between today's hiring managers and today's managers? You know, I, I hate to blame things on COVID, but some of it's COVID related. And, and oh, over the last several years, you had a lot of people with a lot of knowledge, a lot of industry knowledge, a lot of management skills, training that they had developed over decades who just said, adios, I'm out. And of course they got to be replaced. So we bring in more people and we bring in a lot of young people and they're good quality people. And in most businesses, what happens is we wave this magic wand and we say, ta-da, you're a manager, go manage. Well, that doesn't make them any better at managing, right? <laughs> well, what do I do no. from here? <laughs> what do I do from here? So, you know, where I come in is I try to give those people some tools. I give them some stuff to actually work with that is data-based. Because if we're expecting people to have developed the instinct for management in a year or two or even three, that it took their predecessor 15 to develop and screw up, right? And develop and screw up and develop and screw up. I want to give them tools that makes them more effective right out of the gate. And that's why I partnered with Predictive Index. And that's why I'm doing what I'm doing is I'm out there trying to help companies all across the country get better. Absolutely. Now for companies who are hiring your service on is it kind of the, a similar use case that you've seen where they hire someone for great experience, may not be management experience, or they have a great attitude and outlook on life and they want to harness that, but they just need a little bit of additional training. And that's where you can come in to actually boost them up into a higher level management playing field. Yeah. So there's a lot of pieces to what I do. And, and again, it, it's all data-based. What I like is to take some of the emotion out of it and try and put something in a concrete foundation that you can work with. So uh, part of it is hiring. It's how do we identify who's the right fit for the job, right? That's a big piece. If we can find people that like the work, well, they're more likely to be successful, right? And they're more likely to stick and they're more likely to take coaching and feedback. 
So that's a big piece, right? And then the next thing is, how do we help managers develop their people? Okay, maybe it's a brand new manager. How do they learn to go from individual contributor to actually managing people? Maybe it's the next level up. You know, I'm a manager of managers now, and how do I manage these five people? So we work on that. And, and so there's a big part of leadership development. And then the other part of what I do is actually team building and team dynamics. And so we look at the team, but we don't just look at it and say, okay, you have this tendency and you have that tendency. That's interesting, but it doesn't accomplish anything. So we actually look at that and we look at it relative to the actual work or the strategic priorities of that team. And we help to identify who should we lean into, right? Who might be better at this task and better at that task? And so it's really, it's hiring. It's leadership development, it's retention, and it's team dynamics. I love the approach that you and your business take towards that there's the database element that you are putting truths and numbers into a system and it can compute this and give us an output that helps guide us and direct us. But there is another element, especially when it comes to team building and morale, and that is that emotional element where sometimes maybe us as managers Maybe we're thinking too binary. Maybe it's too black and white. Maybe we should put some more emotion into that. How does emotion play a role in the data and specifically with the team building and development? Yeah, the big part of it is that, you know, Chris, we, we all operate a little differently. Yeah. We're all different people. Uh, what this data enables me to do is know what you need. It, it, it helps me to understand my employee because if I don't have that knowledge, I default to my preference, right? And there's that old saying, when you're a hammer, everything's a nail. <laughs> well, everything's not a nail. So I need to learn to maybe rephrase my messaging, or maybe some prefer me to come in a little softer when naturally I might like to come in like a hammer, right? And that's really where the value is. It, it's not just that, hey, this person good or bad. It's really not about that. It's more about how do I deliver a message so that my employee can absorb the information in a way that's useful and tangible and, and actionable. And that's really the key. That is so important because all too often we feel as when we're communicating, we just need to say what's on our mind and get it off of our chest rather than understanding what message is being delivered and received by the recipient. And that's so important, especially as a manager, you're trying to take the lead. You're leading the team and the company, trying to achieve goals and objectives and working with people. You need to make sure that your message resonates with the intended receiver. And that's exactly right. That is really an important key. One of the things I find with newer managers is they don't know how to deliver coaching and feedback. Coaching and feedback comes across like, hey, you need to be different. You need to be more accurate, or you need to learn how to let things go, or you need to be more social, or you need to be more collaborative. And for the employee, it's all just mushy, right? There's nothing actionable there. And so I do spend my time teaching managers how to coach in such a way that the feedback is actionable, that the employee actually helps work out their own action plan, and then they can actually execute on something. And so they walk away feeling like, wow, I know what to do to get better. That's exactly it. We don't want to just be told we're doing something wrong and then be better. Maybe find better ways to inspire me and get me excited about making these changes, because this is more about our personal and career development then noticing our flaws and saying, you have to change something about this. I think we need to work on the messaging and how that resonates with people so we can get a better end result and not hurt feelings along the way. And I'll tell you that personal and career development is a critical piece. Now, statistically, and you can find these statistics all over the place, but 70% of the people that quit a job say they quit because of their manager. Okay. It's not an unknown, right? That's a normal thing you would think of. 55% of the reason that those people quit a manager 
They say the reason is my manager doesn't care for my, my personal development or my career development. And so when we have a simple tool that addresses that, not only does it get better performance, but it makes the employee feel like my manager actually cares about me and cares about my development. We take a massive chunk of the reason people quit and poof, we eliminate it. Wow. And that's over 50%. It's over half of the reason that people quit and leave. That's right. That's incredible. Now, when it comes to the qualities and traits, you've been working with this program for decades and you've seen how it works and how it can be applied. Are there certain qualities or traits that you've seen that natural leaders, natural managers have about themselves? And how can that translate to someone who's new to management? What should they focus on working towards for furthering the development of themselves? Yeah. And it's really interesting because we look at natural leadership characteristics. Well, it really depends on what are you leading, right? So, you know, if, if I'm leading a team of salespeople, well, I, there are certain characteristics that I'm going to need in order to lead a team of salespeople. If I'm leading a team of accountants, well, there may be entirely different characteristics that I need in order to be successful. And, and that's really what being a partner with Predictive Index is all about is we use this assessment, we use this data, it takes about six minutes. And so we use this assessment to understand, again, who's who, what does each person need? And it enables me to coach, to couch that message a little bit, right? And to provide it in such a way. Now you're right. If I'm from the automotive space, right? If I'm addressing off my team of salespeople, I need to deliver that message a specific way. If I'm addressing my team of of technicians, well, they're a whole lot less interested in me getting excited. And they're a lot more interested in about facts and details and specifics, right? So it helps me lead both teams because I know what both teams really need. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. Have you noticed any commonalities between uh, certain generations? I know there can be kind of this overreaching blanket that will throw on a certain generation or an age group. Yeah. But do you find any of those to be actually true? Do certain generations have different motivators? Are, are things really different between the generations based on their age? It's a great question. And I'll tell you, in my experience, the answer is no. It doesn't matter what generation it is. We all have our preferred work styles and we all have our things that are natural gifts and things that aren't. I'll tell you where I find the difference. When I grew up, you had a job and you kept that job and you stayed in that job. And if your boss was a jerk, you, you went home and you'd tell your folks, my boss is a jerk. And they'd say, yeah, they're all jerks. Suck it up, buttercup, and go back to work. Okay. And in today's generation, the, particularly the younger generations, that's not really accurate, right? So now if your boss is a jerk, they say, find another job. There's more out there. There's more opportunities out there. And so because people are willing and able to be a little more transient, I hate to use the word transient because that's not really the intent, but they certainly have more flexibility in their career choices and they're more willing to apply that flexibility. There's less room for error, right? So if you're a manager, I don't get four chances on an employee. I might get two. By the third one, they usually go, I'm out. I, you know, I quit. I don't want to work for you. And so I do get this question often, is there a generational difference? No, not really. The difference is the younger generations not willing to put up with my mistakes for very long. Well, that's an eloquent way to put it. And I think it's so important to touch on that. And I think what you addressed should actually sound an alarm to all managers out there. This is a make or break sort of scenario where if you want to retain and keep the top talent in your agency, in your company with you, you need to make sure you do it right and don't ruin those opportunities because like you said, someone is willing to jump ship. They will quit right away and find something else. It may not be better, but it's more about their personal health and the mental health that they're more focused on as opposed to, let me just suck it up and get through it. And, and, and that really is a big part of the difference. And, and 
you know, at my generation, part of your identity was where you were. And that's not really the case anymore. And, and, and by the way, I'm not saying mine was right. You know, I'm not 100% sure this one's right. It might be somewhere in the middle, but, you know, I get it. And if I can't provide opportunities and coaching and feedback, of course, people are going to quit. And statistically, if you look at some of like Bureau of Labor Statistics and things like that, the tight labor market is going to continue. It's not going to change. There's not suddenly some influx of people that's coming. The tight labor market's going to continue. And so we need to do a better job of being managers and supervisors and employers in order to keep the right people that are the most effective for our roles. Truer words have never been spoken. Now, I, I do want to ask more about just your experience within entrepreneurship. I'm sure you listen to a few podcasts or you're reading books or you have these resources that you like to tap into. Has there been a certain resource either new to you or has been super effective in kind of changing your mindset or allowing you to take actionable insight from that? Yeah, good question. I don't know that I, I would tell you that there's any specific book. I read a lot of books. I listen to a lot of books. I listen to podcasts and I meet with a lot of clients too. And I, as I'm trying to kind of develop that plan, one of the things is that plan is different for different companies. So it's certainly not my place to come in as an outside consultant and say, this is the only way that works. And this is the way you're going to do it. That's just not right. So we need to honor and respect those cultures that founders have built, that entrepreneurs have built, and try and work within that to help them. You know, it's also part of where the data helps is I've got clients that everything is right now and immediate, right? Fast, 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 fast. And so if we hire people that are steady, they fail. But they don't recognize that until somebody waves the flag at them, right? Conversely, if I take somebody who's just constantly, I got to go, I got to go, I got to go. And I put them in a company that moves at a more glacial pace. They get frustrated and quit. So it, it's really about taking all of that information in and trying to help put it in a way that my clients can use and can get value out of. Again, different clients need different things. Different companies are at different stages. You have some companies that have been growing like crazy and hiring was the only thing they were concerned about. And now all of a sudden they're, they're tapped out. They don't want to hire anymore, but they don't want to lose people either. And so they want to focus on retention and that's where we're focused on with them. So I hope that kind of answers your question. It absolutely does. And the three pieces of that recruiting and hiring and development puzzle that it comes down to is so important. That first crucial step is that pre-qualifying. You're trying to find the right fit. But again, some instances, like you said, each business is unique, hiring spree, and now they actually want to retain and develop what they currently have. But it's important to take that bird's eye view within the business, see what's working. You run your programs, the tools and analytics, and that data set provides you some answers and some direction this isn't just about, hey, this is what Brian thinks. This is my personal opinion. This is based on facts. Let me show you some use cases, some case studies that have actually been an example for the situation that they're in right now. Yeah, exactly. And I've found working with a lot of C-suite founders and presidents and directors, and they're willing to listen. They, they recognize they become successful oftentimes because they see the future before it gets there which is awesome, but now they've got to help get everybody else there, right? And that's sometimes where I come in is to help them with that change management, with that sometimes it's a culture shift and sometimes it's just pruning and trimming. Just kind of cleaning up the edges a little bit. Sure. Yeah. Now, are there certain industries that you've worked best with or do you kind of just help with every industry? Yeah, it's, it's a fun question. Of course, my background is automotive. So I do have a large number of automotive dealerships that I work with. But really, any company that's got people, they need help or generally they need help. And that's where I come in. So I, I do have a, a large number of automotive clients, but I have everything from software developers to 
retail stores to restaurants to defense contractors to banks. It, they've all got people and they all run into the exact same issue. That's fantastic. It's a fantastic service that you've put together. It's something that helps a lot of businesses be more successful. And I think for ourselves, marketers, business owners, entrepreneurs, we're always trying to level up our game. We're trying to look into the future and see what's next. And we need to make sure that we have the right team coming with us because they're either going to ensure our rapid growth, if that's what we're looking for, or they're going to hold us back or just kind of, we're going to stay in the middle here, but we need to make sure that we're doing everything we can and a small investment into peopleitics here can mean massive growth for our, our business and our company. That's right. It is a small investment, but I will tell you that churning over people is a huge cost, huge, huge, huge. So we quantify it because that's part of what we do, but you know, $60,000 a year employee costs about $20,000 to turn that person over. So if you're turning over one a month, you're $250,000 a year that just came out of your bottom line. Wow. So, and think about where those resources could have gone. That's right. That's incredible. Now, Brian, where can people find out more about Peopleytics? You personally, where can they find you online and get connected with you? Yeah, you can find me on LinkedIn and I'll provide contact info. In fact, for your listeners, I, I'm happy to even set it up so they could try it for free. They could try out the tool. I'm such a believer in this that I'm willing to give it away and, and let you try it all out. And hopefully it works for you. That's wonderful, Brian. Thank you so much. We'll make sure to include the links and that special offer down in the show notes below. So make sure you check that out and take advantage of that tool. Again, Brian's offering a free trial of this. You got to get started just to get some insight and data to understand what it is that is or isn't working within your business. Brian, thank you so much for joining us and sharing this insight with us. Congratulations on everything that you've built and the continued success of your business. Is there anything that we can do to support you in your endeavors? No, I'm really thrilled to be here. Great talking with you, Chris. I really appreciate it. And certainly I hope some of your listeners will reach out to me because I'd, I'd love to just keep sharing it and see if that's right for some of them. That sounds fantastic. It is a win-win scenario. Make Absolutely. sure you take advantage of Brian's offer here. And thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you.